Driving, swerving, I've been drinking, racing to you, baby girl, you know I'm anxious. She called me daddy, called me Kelly when she texted me, sent me out the destination. Time is precious, of the essence, ain't no stressing, baby, let me ease your mind. Take your problems, leave them all behind. Party like it's 1999. This rush of feeling got me on the high. Swear it's just enough to get this by. Baby, come that's with me, let's right take a flight. We gon' do whatever that you like. When I make Anything that comes out of that fucking collective is hard, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Hey. All right, man. We out here again. And um, this week it was kind of like, uh, at least it wasn't shit out there that I was noticing and I wanted to talk about until yesterday. Right? Yeah. Yesterday, DJ Academics put out the, the alleged or what he perceived as threats from him to Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. Or no, no, from Nicki Minaj to him. He perceived them as threats. The true intentions behind the messages she sent him, nobody knows but her. Mm-hmm. You know, well, we can't really say, but to me, it looked like threats to me. Uh, and this ain't in particular about the so-called threats that were sent to him from her. Yeah, this is about the last year and a half of two or two of Nicki Minaj all together like yeah what like the fuck? I mean <laughs> I know she came out and said she was gonna retire from rapping because mm-hmm. she she wants to start a family and shit which is all good I mean that's cool I mean you ain't got I mean I ain't gonna miss the music but <laughs> I mean but that's all I really saw and then now I'm seeing this damn I mean, even with the Cardi B shit, I done seen her and Cardi B's fight, or you know, when they had that little incident at the at the um at the fashion show. Yeah, they had that little incident where niggas was getting hit or whatever. Well, Cardi B got punched by somebody, but she, she got tried hit. to hit Nicki Minaj with a shoe. Yeah, and then I said, I remember that. And then, I mean, the whole safari shit with her but, nigga. It seemed like she been having a fucking meltdown. Like one of the midlife, midlife crisis type shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like she been having constant meltdowns from the whole shit where with Cardi B to where she feels like there was a fucking um, conspiracy theory in Atlantic Records to keep Nicki Minaj down to not let artists work with her. I mean that's allegedly why the whole Uzi Vert. Shit didn't come out right. Mm-hmm. The whole um, the, the, it took a long time for that one. What's the song called with him and her? The fucking um, remix to that song that that I like by him is called uh, shit. Bro, I I'm, I am no help here because I don't really fuck with hey, yo, Uzi right, like that. What's the song no by cap. Uzi? I, I know you. You'll get over it. Yeah, Nicki Minaj and him had that shit out, bro, and it was like, they, it was supposed to come out at a certain time, and it didn't fucking release because she says because of how Atlantic Records is viewing her now that Cardi is their top dog, you know. Uh huh. I gotta know the name of this song. The uh, the way life goes. Yeah, the way life goes. That's that's what it is. The shit off of his uh, love. Well, some fucking. XO Tour Life? No, the no, XO Tour Life is on it. On that same album. It was an EP he came out with with a Scott Pilgrim vs. the World looking cover. Anyway. Uh, um, Love is Rage. Yeah. Love is Rage too. That's what I was going to say that, but I didn't want to sound like I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. Yeah. I, been I had to look it up because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking I mean, about. I'm going to be, I'm going to keep it a band with you. I like some of his music. I mean, I do too, but I'm not like I had never heard that shit. You never heard that song? No, bro. Is was it some all shit? Over the radio. For well, I don't know, maybe. I don't remember ever hearing it. I like that shit. That shit is fucking fire, bro. No, the one with just him. I never listened to the one with her on it. Uh huh. The one with just him. Shit is fire as hell. I can't lie. Nigga, I mean, is that the Naruto nine-tailed fun. fox? Nigga, look at that. That dude look like a bite <laughs> off the damn nine-tailed fox right there. What the fuck? Uh, anyway, back to what we're talking about. We're not talking about Astral Chain on the fucking podcast. Pause the goddamn... Fuck it. 
<laughs> anyway. <laughs> Nicki Minaj has been having constant meltdowns. The last major meltdown that she had that I paid any attention to was the whole controversy with the Travis Scott bundles. Of how her bundles didn't count, or her album. Um, oh, yeah. I, I think I remember us talking about that shit. Yeah, we talked about that because she was mad about her album not being number one because his tour his his merch and uh ticket bundles got fucking counted as his album sales because they was giving the album away with the merch with the hoodies and shit mm-hmm. and with the bundles for the tour tickets but she got so mad to the point where she uh even disrespected i ain't gonna say go as far as say disrespected but she kind of slyly came at the man's child mm-hmm Remember, because she got, she got mad about Kylie Jenner tweeting it out with yeah. a picture of her and and the baby. Uh-huh. And she was like, y'all using y'all child to sell albums. That's not a direct quote. This is all paraphrasing. But like, Nicki Minaj, you the number one commercial uh, based on commercial success you the number one female yeah even going artist going ever, back to that right? travis scott shit this yeah. is what she actually said she said she wanted to punch him in his fucking face over album beef she wanted to punch him in his fucking face because he fucking sold the album and her, he came yeah. out number one his uh after his album Astro World beat her um, new record for the like to the top of the charts yeah, and his shit didn't and it wasn't fucking close bro like I think his album was number one in week. This was like the second week his album was out. Then it beat hers in her first week. Mm-hmm. His first week, he sold 500000 Uh huh. in the first week. More than 500000 But he went gold in a week. Right? Yeah. Nicki Minaj, you didn't acknowledge the... You acknowledged the fact that you was mad at him over his fucking bundles being counted. You didn't acknowledge the fact that you... Went and begged for fucking Fifi to be put on your album, even though it's six nine song to count towards your fucking album sales. Though last minute shit, you put Fifi on the album because it was a big ass hit, so you could get sales from it. What's the difference between what he did and what the fuck you did? Like, I'm not knocking it because like in. I'm not knocking it object, uh, subjectively, I mean, in my opinion, I'm not here to say that she shouldn't have been able to do that. But she is here to say that he shouldn't be able to sell his fucking tickets as part of his album. One of the, uh, number one, I could see if it was like the DJ Khaled shit. I was about to say, and I don't even think that shit got cleared to be on the album. Yeah, it's on there. Fifi was on there. Because shit's... Did, album, did the shit get taken off? Because that shit is not here now. That shit was on there. It's like a bonus track or something. Well, probably the, it was a deluxe version of that fucking album. Yeah, the bonus version. Mm-hmm. Did you find it? No, I don't see Fifi. Hold on just a second. We can pause this shit. I'll look it up. I was about to say, I mean, I'm not doubting it. I'm just saying, I wonder did... Like some shit with fucking 6 9 ine happened to where she had to take the shit off her album type shit. I don't think so. Because I was about to say, that shit like, ain't even, up there. Even with that song, bro. How she fucking forced him to change his shit from Fashion Nova, which is a popping ass brand in the urban community right now. Mm-hmm. She got him to change the lyric to Apple Bottom, which is some shit that, that ain't, ain't been nobody popular wearing no in more. 10 years. Mm-hmm. My nigga, like. That's some crazy shit. Like Fashion Nova because Cardi B is one of their biggest brand yeah. ambassadors. Yeah, like every other picture Cardi B posts is like she she say something about the like the Fashion Nova jeans, like it's the best fit in jeans type shit. I even seen some shit like that today. I was just fucking around on Instagram and just seeing Cardi B up there. She uh had on like Fashion Nova jeans and shit. Well, I don't see I mean, it up they here paying either, her. but they I mean, she, they may not have cleared it to be up here, but she was trying to get it to be up there. Uh huh. Fifi on her shit to boost the, the, the shit. boost the sales. Yeah, that's what she was trying to do. But my nigga, you 
you still sold a million copies of this fucking record. Like, why are you, why are you mad? That Lil I mean, Wayne, that when Lil when <laughs> when niggas when when people get like Nicki Minaj, so Nicki Minaj was at one point in time the biggest female artist out, right? She's still. I mean, she's still. She still is. Out, Them motherfuckers ain't bigger than she is when it come down to. Legacy and career, nigga. But it, but it's like she had some. She had like this aura where everybody wanted her on the track, and they still do. But it's not as strong now as because we got fucking Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B, and all these other women that are now rapping and they getting a little traction. So I feel like when Nicki Minaj saw that she released the album and that shit didn't go first, that she was like, "Oh fuck, I can. This ain't happening. Like I'm the." I'm Nicki Minaj, like, you know, you know, I like, how she, I, that's how I think it would be for her, she would be like, I'm Nicki Minaj, I'm the fucking, I'm the shit, why is my shit not first right now? Yes, but, I think, like, the, the music industry now is not a fucking race to the top of the charts no more, uh-huh. like it used to be. Like, the music industry wasn't a race to the top of the charts, or at least the hip-hop industry wasn't a race to the top of the charts in the early days. So, so... And it's not a race to the top of the charts now anymore. It was, it was that time, like, in between the... Maybe the, the, the late 90s to the streaming era. Yeah. Like, that's at, when... that, at that point in time... Go ahead. Oh, so I was just about to say that's when shit started really going like top of the charts type shit. It was a race to the top of the charts because basically if you was a rapper or whatever and in the hip hop industry, your shit debuted somewhere outside of like the top 30 or or something. Uh Uh-huh. My nigga, you wasn't going to get the numbers that the label was looking for. Like, you still might go gold, but back then, album sales, streaming and shit won't popping. So you had to buy like, the album. Yeah, if niggas you was won't. going and buying albums yeah, like, like like Wu Tang and shit. You talking about like around like, that time when niggas was dropping albums? Like you had to go to the store and physically no, buy I'm a ta- copy. I'm talking about after that era, because like in the Wu Tang when they first came out, Thirty Six Chambers debuted at like number forty one or forty two on the charts, and that shit still sold like five million copies. Mm-hmm. So. So, I'm talking about she treating it like it's a she treated that situation like being number one was the be all and end all. Mm-hmm. When that's not how it is no more. Like it ain't a race to the top of the charts to where like back in 2008, if you debut if your album debuted at like number fucking 50, it's you pretty much for the most part. Are gonna be down in the hundreds the next week. Mm-hmm. Now with streaming, bro, if your album can debut at number twenty something, and if you get one joint that pops off, that can catapult your album to be at the top of the charts, bro. That is true. Why you think that the fucking Good Kid, Mad City is still in the top two hundred? That album is still in the top two hundred because people probably stream the songs. Nigga, fucking, uh, the shit with Drake on it, Poetic, Poetic Justice. Yeah, I know niggas is still, and, that shit still be coming on the radio that's sometimes. That's what I'm saying, that album been in the top 200 since it came out. Same with, like, Drake shit, right? Like, yeah. Scorpion shit. I but, know niggas is still streaming no, that album. That album set a record. Mm-hmm. Fucking Good Kid, Mad City set a record. It's been in the top 200 since 2012, my nigga. Damn. It has never gone out of the top 200 in seven years. <laughs> Seven years. It's bro. not a debuting at the top of the chart is not the fucking mandatory shit for a big artist that it used to be, bro. And even if you don't like, even Outkast, my nigga, they only had one number one album ever. Uh huh. Nigga, every other one was at number two or worse, bro. So like Drake's nothing was the same. Uh-huh. It's still on the Billboard 200. That's what I'm saying because of streaming. And her album that she was complaining about that sold 185,000 copies of... Yo, Nirvana, never mind, is still on the Billboard 200. 
I don't think it was on there constantly since it came out, though. It's no. probably just back up there because of streaming. I'm talking about Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid, Mad City has the record for being on the top 200 for the most time. Uh-huh. Is it still up there now to uh, this day? That's what I'm saying. I'm looking for but it. But it was up there like a couple weeks ago, and the news story popped right into our feed. Mm-hmm. And his shit been on yep. there. Yep, 141. Yeah, that shit been on there. It has never left the top 200 since 2012 because of streaming. Because of streaming, her album debuted at number two. It came out behind Travis Scott's, right? Mm-hmm. Astro World. Look up Astro World and see what the certification is, please. I got you. I'm, it's probably double platinum, if I'm not. Ah, that's that's straight. what I would believe it was, but I'm still gonna look. Go on this on the Wikipedia. That shit will mm-hmm. tell you. And then hit down here certifications. That shit is double platinum. And Two Nicki, million sales. Nicki Minaj, the fucking album you was complaining about being behind his has sold a million copies. You ain't even that far behind that motherfucker, man. Like, like you don't have to be the most popular thing every time. So that leads us into how she went on a rampage. Against Cardi B, passive aggressively, might I add, because she claimed that she liked Cardi B and what, but in the in the background she couldn't stand her. Like, mm-hmm. right in the background she couldn't stand Cardi B. She didn't want Cardi B to be on the fucking motorsports song with with her and the Migos. Uh huh. <laughs> like that's that's the crazy shit. And that shit is crazy because it's kind of like, like, like. I'm going I'm to put it in the damn bar that fucking J. Cole said, like, two legends can't coexist type shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, Cardi B won't even a legend at this point. That's what I'm saying. It was fucking... I mean, I, I would I would personally say that Cardi B is a legend now. I don't know. She ain't been in it long enough to be a legend, bro. She a fucking, I mean... She a sensation. That's yeah, what she yeah. Is. Better yet. She is, like, kind of the fucking poster girl of... Music right now. And shit, and damn, Megan the Stallion is taking that shit over. Yeah. And nobody, and Cardi B ain't mad. <laughs> At least she haven't come out to be mad in public. But then, like, but Nicki Minaj and um, Megan the Stallion are like, like best buds. <laughs> because Nicki Minaj, Megan the Stallion ain't the one that knocked her off the pedestal. Cardi B is. Uh huh. My nigga, she was already off the pedestal when Megan Thee Stallion came out. Mm-hmm. And Megan Thee Stallion is helping her get back popping. Yeah. Nigga, that's different. And Cardi B is the one that came and took her, uh, took all her stuff. That's what the fucking... Uh, the niggas I listen to on the radio on ESPN, that's what they say. Mm-hmm. She came and took all her stuff. Which is fine, like... Nigga, y'all, you 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 got hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't understand what there is to be fucking upset about. If you never made another fucking dime off of rap and never had another top ten hit, you good for life. Yeah. You got a dedicated fucking fan base. You got a uh, she she got a hive, nigga. Any no the fucking barbs. That's what I'm saying. Yo. The barbs. barbs will fucking come at your neck, bro. She got they the- came at Safari's um. Is it is it is it his his fiance Erica Mina? He at, took Bow Wow Girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> bro. <Bruh. laughs> they was flaming that. They was flaming her on, bro, at Rihanna's bro. Diamond Ball, hold on, hold on. and that was where. And by the way, Rihanna's pregnant now. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Uh, is these rap niggas fucking the same four women, bro? Like, I believe so. I honestly believe that rappers. I mean, we That's can what they have to choose Safari for. A fucking rapper, bro. Well, no, nah, that nigga is just a fucking that nigga is a media personality or some yeah. shit. This nigga took Bow Wow fucking Bow Wow used to be engaged to that chick. Bro. I know, I remember. The fuck, she on the fucking bottom tier <laughs> of the niggas, man. These niggas is fucking the same four chicks. This is how come bottles was being thrown between Chris Brown and Drake. <laughs> and them niggas was mad over Rihanna's ass. And that, I, bro, and them niggas I posted crazy. a fucking, I'm a, we gonna go off on a little sidebar and we gonna come back to Nicki Minaj in a second. Mm-hmm. But I posted a fucking tweet 
And right. I said Nicki Minaj is retiring from rap to have a to have a family and kids. And I said Rihanna is pregnant. That nigga Drake is about to release the best album we ever heard. Bro, that nigga about to release. Chris the- Brown is about to release the best album we ever heard. Also, bro, Drake about to release the most heartbroken album we <laughs> ever heard, bro. That Imagine shit, this shit. Nicki that was- shit is about to be fucking hitting, bro. bro. That shit is about to be putting me in my feelings about all oh, type of dumb shit. Nigga, look, look, look. Drake is the fucking biggest rapper out. This nigga been the biggest rapper out for like nine years. Nine years straight. <laughs> that. Like that nigga. <laughs> Nine she, years straight. That motherfucker Nicki Minaj was right there with him, bro. He got to be looking at himself in the mirror like, I was in love with this fucking bitch. And she didn't want me, but she wants some fucking gang member that nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> I am the, that nigga's probably like, I am the biggest fucking name in music right now. And that she don't want me. That nigga ain't even fucking a rapper. That nigga's a fucking pop star, my nigga. Like. Who uh, that nigga just raps when he feels like it. Who Drake? Yeah, like, I mean, honestly, bro, I'm pretty sure niggas would pay Drake to just be somewhere. No, niggas pay fucking wealth and the great to be places. Yeah. Nigga, of course. Drake Drake, but see Drake can act too. Nigga, Drake Drake started off a lot of I think a lot of niggas forget that Drake started off as a fucking actor. People who got beef with Drake don't let you forget that he started off <laughs> acting, brother. Don't let you forget he started off on Degrassi in a wheelchair, brother. That's, that's no, it, hold on. I got a, it was a question, right? So you know, B, you know Drake that had beef with fucking Common, Pusha T. Common? You remember the um? You ain't wet like the Sonny nigga. You Canada dry. You know the stay scheming. Remember. You ain't never heard that. I heard the song, but I ain't remember. Know that it was. It was it was it was a kind of it was a it was a little beef between them niggas. I don't know it. It was a little beef. I ain't paying it. I didn't pay it. It's a little beef. So it was like between Common, Pusha T, Meek Mill, and um It's one fucking more nigga that Drake had beef with. He had beef with a lot of people, bro. That's what I'm saying, but it was like I I I sent it in my group. Alright, then Joe Button. Oh yeah. What was Drake's fucking record? Bro, he lost to Pusha T. That's clear. Like, he lost that beef. Because a lot of people shit. was saying four and zero. Oh. No, like he didn't. He didn't. He he didn't oh, lose. Nigga, don't, like, he, like, he didn't lose at all. Look at the fucking the beefs and and and, and compare them to that he kept having success, nigga. Fucking Nas ate Jay Z alive, and Jay Z kept having success. Jay Z acknowledges that he lost that shit. He said the Joneses couldn't keep up. Maybe my nigga Nas, but I got stronger after Ether. No, mm-hmm. nigga, he lost. Drake is still in his feelings about fucking. Drake is still in his feelings about fucking the story of Added Don. He was up in there under under somebody's live talking some, I guarantee you, play the story of Adidon. I bet you it don't slap no more. I bet mean, he ain't still salty, nigga. He lost against put, fucking Pusha T. He, but then again, he didn't. He also didn't respond. We don't know no, what fuck the fuck that, that nigga, other... He said the shit first. He said that other oh, fuck that, nigga. If you didn't put it out, then fuck it. Like... I mean, I do want to, I do want to fucking hear, I actually do want to hear that shit. I think that shit was a publicity stuff. You think, you think it do? face scheme. Because I think anybody who was in a real rap beef would have dropped it. Mm, I don't think. Especially if it was as, as career ending as Jay Prince was making it seem to be. I think that was all a load of crap. Nigga, I'm not even going to lie. I don't believe that shit ever existed, bruh. I can I can honestly say he beat Meek Mill. Well, anybody would say that Meek Mill got destroyed, bro. He was too busy typing on the computer. Seeing that, mm-hmm. I think I don't know because I can't. I won't. I can't really. I don't know too much about the Joe Button. I don't bro, think it was was really it rapper. Lot of Joe Button, bro. He said some like one of his subliminal shit, but he didn't make no songs back to Joe Button, bro. He tried to he big time Joe Button, but he basically was on some. Shit with Joe Budden, like, you ain't worth the reply. Mm-hmm. 
That's I don't think did. he didn't beat Pusha T in my opinion. Pusha T ate that nigga, man. That nigga, I think, I think that honestly, because therapy after that shit, bro, that nigga was fucking upset. That nigga, this is how you I know mean, Pusha the shit T. didn't go as far enough with Common, but Common did have that fire fucking verse. No, bro, the shit with Pusha T, he ate him so fucking bad that that nigga made him go create that whack ass song about his son, bro. Like, yeah. That March 10th bullshit or whatever it's called. I, I kind of like that song. That I ain't even gonna cap. I kind of like that shit. I'm getting mashed. But, but what do you think that nigga's record is? Well, shit. I mean, the Joe Button shit. That, I mean, we can, we can, we can knock that off. That's, the, well, that's a win. Let's say that's a win. Well, he definitely lost to Pusha T. That's so that's, one. that's one and one. Let's say he beat he beat Meek Mill. That's yeah, two. Yeah, that's, that's two and one. It's two and one. And so common. Common. I mean, I don't know. One and a tie. Let's give him a tie. Yeah. So that nigga's that nigga's two one and one. I mean, the Meek Mill shit was easy. The Joe Budden shit he just didn't reply to. He 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 kind of he kind of um, made some subliminal shits with the pump it up. Lyrics, pump, pump it up, that shit. And he was coming at Joe Budden, fucking pump it up track. You know yeah. I mean? I'm not a one hit wonder, you know. I'm a stud. Yeah, bro, so like. I done turned into the nigga that you almost was. But like, that's that's. To me, my nigga, like. When you beefing with a nigga, say that nigga name, bro. Like, if you don't, if you just. Put some put subliminals out there, and you don't say the name. You already behind. You want some pussy shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say the name, bro. Because now I said niggas' names. So did Jay Z. Yeah. I don't care if you mob deep. I hold trigger the cruise. You little fuck. I got money stacks bigger than you. <laughs> when I was pushing weight back in '88, you was a ballerina. I got the picture. I seen you, and then you dropped shook one, split your demeanor. Well, we don't believe you. You need more people. <laughs> Ask Nas. He don't want to withhold. No. <laughs> <sighs> Nigga, he was not fucking playing. Like I heard that Gazy and Cockafella record bonus beat on Sunday. <laughs> Gazy <laughs> and Cockafella record <laughs> on his beat. That would have made me a little sad, nigga. My Tybo ho. <laughs> trying to, work trying to get by. Ask me if I'm trying to kick <laughs> knowledge. Nah, nigga, I'm trying to kick the shit you need to learn, though. That the ether, ether, that shit that, that make your soul burn slow. slow. That, dang see, diddy, when you dang say, daddy, a dang dummy. Oh, well, I, I get, get it. You, you Biggie, and he's puffy. Rockefeller died of age. That was the end of this chapter. And, and that's, that's the, the guy, guy y'all chose, chose to name y'all company company after, the name y'all company after. Put it together. I rock, rock hoes. Y'all rock, rock fellas. fellas. And, and now y'all trying to take my spot, fellas. Nah, man. That nigga was coming. He, you want no fucking question who he was talking to. Put the name out there, nigga. Yeah. Stop I with mean, this. That's the other thing. Like, like That's the other thing I ain't like about how Nikki was acting. Everybody clearly knew you wasn't fucking with Cardi. But every time somebody asked you about it, why don't you just say it? Just say it, right? Like, no, people saw it, right? Like, the shit that you was, it, it ain't no secrets in this age of tweeting, bro. Mm-hmm. In this age of tweeting, you can't, you couldn't keep the things you was doing behind the scenes secret, right? Like, that shit didn't work. Man, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel you. Yeah. That, that's how we know that you didn't want her on the fucking motorsport song because niggas told it. <laughs> but he, but I, another thing that I wanted to touch on while we still on this Nicki Minaj shit, this nigga, Chance the Rapper, came out and said that the beef between Cardi B and Nicki Minaj was manufactured. Dead by them. <laughs> Chance the rapper, shut the fuck up, bro. After that whack ass album that you put out, don't nobody want to hear from you. Shut the fuck up. And you got beat by some nigga on the charts that I ain't never fucking heard of. NF. <laughs> right, like, I heard of that nigga because he beat you, bro. Like that's how that's. <laughs> I got I heard of him because he beat you. 
Nigga, be fucking quiet. Nigga, ain't nobody ask you for no intellectual in the, uh, opinions, bitch. And you know the bad baby chick, the 16-year-old chick? Mm-hmm. She even came out and said um, Nicki Minaj has an issue with Cardi B's rise to fame. She was like, yeah. she's salty and she has a bad attitude towards upcoming female artists. Nigga, that shit is true. She done got niggas. She done went to get people fired from the re- from radio stations. Nigga, she done went to, <coughs> to try to get people removed from tracks. Mm-hmm. Nigga. And then all of that shit came back and bitter, nigga. Atlantic Records found their golden goose, and they came at you the same way you've been coming at people. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what it is. They found Cardi B. Yeah, they had two golden gooses at once. They had her and Uzi in the hip hop fucking game. Uzi Vert was putting out hit after fucking hit after hit, bro. The only reason he ain't putting out nothing now is because he got some dickheads for record label heads. DJ Drama and uh, what's the other nigga named Don Cannon. No That's cap, it. bro. They won't let that nigga really that shit. Nigga, uh, that's it. He should have didn't. He just, he shouldn't have signed, bro. He would have been much better off if he would have ended up under quality control. Yeah. Cause they be letting they artists do what the fuck they need to do. But I mean, with this Nicki Minaj shit, I don't really have much else to say about her, unless you really got some like. Like they, rant they, type shit. I'm on some shit know. like, why the fuck can't niggas criticize what you doing? Why is you threatening this man because he criticizes your shit? You out here doing? You in the public eye? And I mean, what? she got. I think she knew where that shit was going coming at DJ Academic. No, no, he was waiting for some shit like this. Now, this is the type of shit you ain't do nothing but feed this nigga. Mm-hmm. That's the type of shit he likes. You know what I'm saying? He did nothing but go straight on everyday struggle. Something that ain't getting the views like it used to get when Joe was on it. Uh Uh-huh. He went straight on everyday struggle and probably got them their most popular episode in months because of this. And he went on his channel and released another video showing all the shit. So you uh, pulling up on that nigga and, and... or threatening that nigga and telling him to pull up and talk to your husband. I mean, you ain't even accomplished shit with that. With this. Because he talked about you. <laughs> the nigga posted. DJ Academics posted and said, Damn, Complex told me I'm on my own dealing with Nicki Minaj and her killer goons. They gave me these and said, Stay safe in these streets. <laughs> <laughs> and he posted some Yeezys, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, why is you stooping to... Right, do you know... This is this is the short sightedness of shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Do you know what kind of fucking if if Nicki Minaj isn't the way wasn't the way that she allegedly is, bro? She could have had so many fucking hits alongside Cardi B. Oh, of course. That's the thing, bro. They could have damn near had whole albums together. Nigga, she, her, and Cardi B could have collaborated on two or three shits a year that would have shot to the top of the charts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> well, shit. That, that shit sounded like it hurt. Uh, it hurt good though. It hurt good. But. Nicki Minaj just stop. She need to stop being a fucking asshole to every I mean, female shit, artist like, to keep it real. I can't sit up here and manufacture no motherfucking sympathy for a multiple, multiple millionaire that's just running around on a pity party. I can't. Because to me, I actually, I'm one of the people when it comes to Nicki, bro. I'm one of the people who didn't. Just look at her and see, oh, this is a fine ass woman that can this rapping. So I'm one of the people who acknowledge that this motherfucker could actually speak. Like, mm-hmm. like she could fucking rap, son. Like that's that's the same thing with Megan. I mean, if you want me to be perfectly honest, I don't think Cardi B can rap worth shit. I think her music is fucking terrible, and she don't even sound right on a beat to me. Mm-hmm. That don't mean that if niggas like it. She shouldn't be out here getting paid from it, bro. Niggas like it, bro. Like it. 
I don't understand why. And it's always, it's been like that a bunch of times. It was the same way with Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim. They didn't like each other for fucking what? I don't know. They was damn near the same fucking thing. Whereas Lil' Kim was just the more fucking, um, <clears throat> Lil' Kim was just the more popular version of it. Like, Lil' Kim was just the, basically the more famous, more successful one. How, y'all motherfuckers could have been making hits. Mm-hmm. I don't know why the hell they didn't like each other. But with this Nicki Minaj shit, like, it ain't it ain't even a Lil' Kim, Foxy Brown situation. Lil' Foxy Brown was on, like, the... She was on, like, the outskirts of superstardom. Lil' Kim was an actual superstar in her day. Now she's selling two and three million copies. Back mm-hmm. in where niggas had that, where streaming wasn't there to help you. You know what I mean? When you released a single, didn't count towards your album sales. It counts towards mm-hmm. single sales. You know what I'm saying? Radio spins didn't count towards album sales. But Nicki Minaj, you was already a superstar when Cardi B blew up, bro. Y'all motherfuckers could have had... Like, what you're doing with Megan Thee Stallion now is what you should have been doing with Cardi B. Whatever personal issues y'all got, I don't know. But I'm talking strictly off the music shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, what what the fuck is the problem with her being popping too at the same time as you? Is it only allowed for one female artist at a time to pop? Nah. That's what that's what the case may be, bro. It won't like that in the fucking eighties. Like MC Light and Queen Latifah wasn't fucking fighting. Like <laughs> <laughs> they was doing music together, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, they wasn't fucking fighting. The Roxanne Sante and the real Roxanne, they was kind of at it, but that was some old fucking publicity shit. I don't really think it was real beef. I think they was just. Going at it over the name, but y'all two motherfuckers done been in physical altercations, mm-hmm. and Nicki Minaj is just having meltdowns. Like she didn't say when it came down to the shit about her saying that she was gonna go start a family. This she didn't just say, um, "I'm a, I'm taking a break from rap or I'm retiring to start my fam my family." I enjoyed the run or whatever. She said, "I'm taking a break." From rap, I'm retiring to start a family. I know y'all happy. For what? Why would somebody be happy that you're gone? Why would you even think that? Because you out here on the defensive already. You know what I'm saying? I just don't fucking get it. Like, like my nigga, the way I'm looking at life, if I had the fucking position that some of these people had, nigga, I wouldn't have shit to be mad about. You know what I'm saying? Mm Mm-hmm. My if I had a hundred million dollars in my bank account, I wouldn't have a reason to beef with no fucking nigga, body. She got hundreds of millions, and not only do she got hundreds of millions or damn near close to it, nigga, she got an endless stream of income with all these fucking songs that she done made, bruh. Uh-huh. Nigga, like, her money ain't going nowhere, my nigga. And that's just... That's basically all I gotta say about it, Nicki Minaj. What's going on with you? Why you having? Why you tripping so hard, man? I mean, shit, nigga, you still got a dedicated fan base. You achieved shit that ninety nine point nine percent of people who share the same dream that you do is never gonna achieve. Mm-hmm. You've achieved shit that Cardi B hasn't achieved. So I'm just saying, like, like DJ Academics, like he ain't even on the level that you've reached in rap. He ain't even on that level in his field. Like, like when it come down to like on YouTube, he's on a high level. But when it come down to like being a media personality, he on the fucking lower rungs of that shit. Like, yeah. So why is you even stooping to wanting to pop a nigga in the face for doing his job? Like, Everyday Struggle is a YouTube show. That's exclusively what it is. 
that shit ain't even crossed over into the mainstream. You, you beefing down, bro. And then, in my opinion, beefing with people who you shouldn't have fucking beef with. You could have made way more money just fucking cooperating with Cardi. No cap. Sometimes I think you got to look over the fucking fact that you will fucking, you want this type of whatever and just look at it like, yo, nigga, we can make, we can sell fucking records. That's how I would have looked at it. I would have been like, yo, we can sell fucking records. So we going to make this shit work somehow. Mm-hmm. Shit, man, that's all I got to say about Miss Nikki. Man. Shit, that's all I got to say, too. We can get into some of these independent artists if you want to. Hell yeah. Let's get into that shit. Alright, first up, got to got to go with the fucking homie. He been on the he been on the show before. You already know. Oh yep. I know where I'ma, I know where this one is going. I'ma I'ma just play this bitch. Let's go. Turn that shit all the way up. It's all the way up. Breezy, the spill kid. Roll call. Oh, bitch, I walk it just like how I talk it. Ain't no sip talk. Ain't no hoe gon' touch up on my wallet. I'm a big dog. I won't never vote. I stay too solid. I'm a pimp, yo. Come and talk to me about a profit. Hey, roll call. Check on every bill that's in my pocket. In my biggest pocket. Watching will a nigga better stop it. Change all of my necklaces. A pen and not a locket. Not a lock. My fucking name looking like a trending topic. Trending topic. Hey, hey, hey. Trending topic. Pulling two that's in my crush. I ain't an alcoholic. Photo ain't no coupe, I'm zooming back there like I'm Sonic Pull them down to ride, my niggas jumping like hydraulics My niggas get that money, dirty money from narcotics I keep a big rack, got these bitches on my gosh Metal on the teeth, got me looking all robotic Sipping on the drink, swag, serving <laughs> hypnotic How you talk down, wanna be me, that's ironic That's this nigga Reezy the Spill Kid is a fucking artist. I'm gonna let that be known right now. Go ahead, man. Reezy the fucking Spill Kid is fucking. He should be the face of that young rap generation shit. I don't know. I don't know how the world doesn't know this this nigga's fucking music. They will. They they're gonna know. That shit to us before it came out. Yeah, we we been doing about this shit, that shit though. For like three we been doing about that shit though. So we we knew what type of heat he had in store. Man, yeah, this fucking song is crazy, nigga. The beat. The he produced it. Over. Start the song over. Start the song over. Right, he produced the shit. Listen at this. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We got hold a on, fucking hold ad. Hold on. We we do have an ad. Mute it. Check study has millions of step by step textbook solutions to help you whenever you're stuck. Shut the fuck up, ad. Anyway, while this ad plays, I'll just go ahead on and continue. Fuck it, leave it in there. Fuck it, just leave it. Just leave it. We ain't gonna pause this shit. Nigga, like that beat, that eerie fucking tone that it starts off with, you know what I'm saying? That shit already gets you into the mood to hear the lo fi. Type shit that's going on All with right, the we, song. We back, we back. Right, listen at this. Oh, bitch, I walk it just like how I talk it. Ain't no sip talk. Ain't no hoe gon' touch up on my wallet. I'm a big dog. I won't never vote. I hear that? It's got that low fi shit. When he get to the to the verse, he just cuts out the fucking. The eerie synthesizer tone that's in the background to draw attention to what he's saying, bro. Mm-hmm. To what he's saying, like, what was your favorite bar? Go ahead. I Metal in my mouth got me looking at robotic. Bro, that shit was too. that shit was fucking See, fire. A lot of nigga. times when niggas listen to this type of rap, 
They get the newer generation of rap. They looking for just a vibe. They ain't really looking for niggas to be really spitting nothing. Uh huh. Like that's that's a mistake that you making if you listen to like a Reezy song. Uh, because that nigga is always he got uh, fucking gems in there. Like even my favorite one, my other favorite one from him is still the one from the first song we reviewed from by him. I'm a real nigga, bitch. Turn, turn off, off that Bryson Tiller. Tiller. Yeah, Man, fuck that. That shit just was hot to me, my yeah, nigga. It, I mean, it was. And that's the way I think. I don't want to hear no man. Fuck all that shit, nigga. Don't be when I when I was younger, motherfucker. When I was younger, back in like fucking 2007, eight, bitch. Don't turn on R. Kelly. <laughs> wanna hear that shit, man? Don't turn on no bump and grind, nigga. Don't turn on no motherfucker who was who was. Don't turn on fucking Trey songs. <laughs> get that shit out of here when I'm around. <laughs> I don't wanna hear no Chris Brown, nigga. Get that shit out of here when I'm around. I'm a real nigga, bitch. Turn, turn off, off that, that Bryson, Bryson Tiller. Tiller. <laughs> yeah. I think I ain't never even heard a song by Bryson Tiller. I have. The only one I heard is the one with him and J Cole. Or no, J Cole won't even. It won't even him and J Cole. It was him and J Cole had a song that had the same beat, right? Yeah, yeah. The um, uh, you know, the one off of J Cole. That thing about you. That off of the fucking for your eyes only album. Yeah, and he had the um, I don't know, Deja Vu. I think it's called Deja Vu. Don't care. Um, but anyway, man, this fucking song is hard as fuck. This nigga Reezy the Spill Kid. I haven't heard no whack music, but I might listen to all the shit that was on the SoundCloud page already, my nigga. Real talk, you can just compile them shits into an album and just put it out. No cap. You know what I'm saying? Who we got next? All right. We have Thunder Party next, right? I've been, I found this guy's music a long time ago, but I couldn't find him. Right? So recently, we got contact from Thunder Party, and I decided this would be the time that I want to review this because I've been I've actually been constantly listening to this joint, and I think it's fire. So this is Devil by Thunder Party featuring Mello. <laughs> This shit just... It sounds like some indie rock and some yeah. soul mixed. The indie rock slash and it indie got, soul. That shit got like a murky fucking vibe to it. Like, mm-hmm. it like, 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 like in a art. cave or something. It sounds like, you know how they have them open mic nights and like bars and shit? Mm-hmm. And you know... You know it be in there, niggas be drunk, just sitting around, and ain't nobody really paying attention to them niggas, right? right. This will be that song where niggas in there is drunk, and it's a, 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 a blonde-haired, dirty shirt-wearing nigga with a guitar, right? And he's singing, and the girl is fine as shit. And she's like, just dropped it, gorgeous. And she's just up there singing. And I feel like, and I feel like that, that'd be the, the vibe for this song. This song is fucking amazing. Not to mention... Bored this Thunder Party music is amazing. Bro, this sound like some... This sound like... Uh, th- this, the, the music we heard from him, it sound like he would be that fucking artist that's like a local legend. Like, yeah, that, a local... Bro, that, that is exactly what it is, bro. Like, a local legend. Like, this shit's... 
Bro, I loved all the music on the whole EP, bro. We might... You we... Wanna, I want to talk about this whole EP. You want to go do the EP or you want to just do this song this week and do the whole joint next week? Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. The whole joint next this week. This is the first one that I heard but from... But I would love to get more insight on what Thunder Party is. Mm-hmm. Because it's, kind of a mystery, bro. it's a like, mystery. Like to me, it is because on the first song, um, the fucking what is it like? Pictures, pictures. pictures. On the first song, he's rapping. If it but even is him, if it's even him, is like Thunder I, Party, a collective? Is it a fucking that's what, super group? Is that's what because this ego? I don't see. I want to figure that out. So hopefully. When we tweet this out, we will get our answers. Oh, we can just DM him. Yeah, we could. I'm, yeah. I don't know. Nigga, I just know this fucking shit is great. Like, I loved it from the first time we heard it, which was like almost... That shit was like the beginning of the year. That shit was the beginning Nigga, of the, the year. the man was so mysterious, we couldn't contact him to like... No cap. Him. <laughs> we, I looked everywhere. Bro, it's a tweet out there on Twitter just floating around of me trying to figure out who this guy well, is. I, I done tweeted two people. I done DM people asking do they know who Thunder Party is. Then right. he just... He popped up out of the blue and was like... Y'all looking for me? <laughs> like, he no cap. That's how he popped up on us, bro. He popped up like, y'all, y'all looking for me? I'm like, yes. <laughs> bro, yes. I, I think it's just better that we that we didn't do it until this long because the format to where we actually play the music for people is better, bro. Yeah. Than us just explaining it, in my opinion. I like that better. Pioneered by fucking the first by by City Pyramids, he was the first person we did this for. Him and uh, Miko Porter. No cap. Yeah, well, he was reviewing you the, the fucking Avengers. Uh, Avengers shitty movie. <laughs> All right, so next we have Ash. Ash Our name, joints. Ash joints, but the, the joint on SoundCloud is going by Ash. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna say Ash. Ash joints produced by. Ass joint. This girl, what? I didn't know that you shit. You didn't know that? She made the beat to yes. this shit. Oh, yes. Shit. Yes. So, and if you got a weird follow ass joints, it was me. <laughs> Straight up. I'm going to just put that out there. I followed you on Instagram. I typed in your name and I followed you. So, if you, if you looked at that and was like, who is this nigga that just followed me? I don't know. It was, it was me. I'm going to be honest. Straight off the bat. Straight off. No cap. No rap cap. <laughs> All me. It was me. So, why stay with me? Produced by Ash Joints. Here, here, here it go. I got a fucking concept for this song. Do you? You go. You probably ain't gonna agree, but you know who I think would fit on this fucking song, and it's gonna be weird as fuck. Who I say? Trinidad James. Get out of here, man. No, twenty Trinidad. Besides the point, bro. Trinidad James actually had a. He had some pretty good fucking songs. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. I feel like he would have. I would. He would have fit on this shit. I think he would have put a fire verse on it too. 
don't need no verse. I just need her on it. I mean, yeah, I'm fine with just her. She, this shit is fire. Bro, this song right here. Not to mention, this is her favorite song that she's made. Bro, the song, when you listen to the song, bro, it sounds like. It just it, it puts you in a it puts me in a mellow mood, which is some when I want to hear mood music, that's yeah. the only kind of mood, mood music I like. I don't like music that I don't use music to get hyped up and none of that bullshit. Mm-hmm. I like music that puts you in a mellow mood, which is what this is. But it's got a good message too, like why the fuck do you have why? I'm trying not to sound rude. <laughs> but, I mean, hey, if the uh, way that you need to say this is rude. Those I type of motherfuckers rude. that are hangers on to you when they should just clearly move on so you can move on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what it sounds like to me she's fucking talking about. It sounds like to me that she's talking about something, uh, a situation that she's in that that's dragging her down. Mm-hmm. But the person just doesn't want to let it go. They don't want to get the fuck out the way. Mm-hmm. Get out, Mikai. I mean, I guess sometimes you just have to break it off from the person to make yourself better, I guess. Which is understandable. I don't know. I don't got experience with that. Most of the time when my shit's ended, they just ended, uh, uh, went up in flames. Yeah, it's still everything is cool. It's still going. It's Yo. Still going. Yo. Still going. This is a major fucking milestone in the recovery podcast, the recovery room. What happened? We didn't fuck up today. Oh yeah. Well, no, we ain't finished yet. So let's not jinx it. <laughs> we are so close. But then, like the fact when I listen to the song, I listen to it a bunch of times. Yeah, but I heard this shit a bunch of times. I, I, when I'm listening to stuff on SoundCloud, I basically turn the phone screen off and just listen. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you do the same shit I do. I go up there, click one of them, them weekly mm-hmm. joints, and I just let it go. I her joint just came up. Her joint came up in a um, when I was listening to Kato Sand. Mm-hmm. That's where her joint came up, but I. When I was listening to this song, just to find out that she produced it also, like, you got immensely, an immensely talented woman here producing, writing, and singing it. Like, the beat, money, like, shit, I could just listen to that beat on a loop. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like when you listen to her singing, it almost puts you in a trance. Yeah, like everything. Does it go so good with the, mm-hmm. with the, with the beat? And like it was all melted together into one fucking great concoction of good music. Yeah, yeah. And it was like the beat was kind of like hypnotizing and shit. And then when she comes over, it's like you in a trance and you can just envision what she's putting forth with her words. Mm-hmm. That's the way I look at it anyway. I love it. We're going to probably review some more of your music or react to it or talk about it or whatever it is that we do here on the Recovery Room Podcast because even week to week, we don't know. Yeah. We, we just do it. We just... <laughs> no cap. I'm going to tell you straight up. This is how that shit went today. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> nigga said, what do you want to talk about? Nigga said, I don't know. Then we was like, Nicki Minaj tripping. That's it. And then whenever it ain't, that is, a, if it ain't one thing, it's a motherfucking other. No cap. We'll come up with something. Exactly. Because this is what we fucking do. Mm-hmm. This is what we do. So, with that being said, it's Nicki hot, Minaj. Bitch, I'm turning my fan back Nicki on. Minaj, stop being a bitch to everybody you come across. I mean, I calm just think, down. like, Nicki Minaj, Nicki, if you had handled, I mean, in my humble opinion, I mean, I'm not the rich one here. You are. If you had handled a lot of some of this stuff differently, you wouldn't be disliked by normal fans. Like, you had, you was it. You had that time, you had years where you were it. Mm -hmm. And even now on your so-called decline, 
you're still releasing million sellers. So I just don't see what there is to be fucked off about. You know what I mean? I feel you. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. So, we done. <laughs> well, you, you... No, I wasn't going to say shit. Oh, <laughs>